All right, just gonna throw out a quick video for you guys. If you have a little mini dig, Chinese built like this, FF12, FF13, QH12, China Coal, anything that's similar to this. Uh, Notice that it was kind of a little bit jiggly, had a little bit of play in the house here. Yeah, so I'm just doing my first oil change at about, I don't know, five hours. And looking around for loose bolts. So under the deck plate here, that's where the battery is in case anyone's wondering. Our hydraulic oil tanks over there. Uh, this is your swing motor. This is what actually turns the whole machine left and right. And I found a few loose bolts in it. So let's see if we can show you there. She's wobbling around like crazy. On the pinion of the drive, show you underneath here. All right. Right there is the other end of that little drive motor that turns the whole house on the machine. It's got a bolt holding it on. We're just gonna double check that that's good and tight because uh, we don't want that coming out. There's a, as far as I know, there's a keyway in there and that bolt holds that little gear up on the end of that motor. If it falls off and you wipe that keyway out, you won't be happy. All right, I'll let you know how it goes. If you uh, need to tighten up your swing motor, this is a eight mil uh, ball head. Allen bit, Allen key, 10,000 names for it. I'm not going to give you any of the right ones because you'll call it something different. Um, this medium extension, 3 8 drive ratchet, and some blue Loctite. And make sure you put some Loctite on them. I know they got lock washers, obviously, they didn't do their job. So we'll get those back in and then we'll uh, move on to the next loose nut and bolt we find or the oil change. Okay, we got all of our bolts tightened up down here. There are all four of them. There's the other two you can see from back here. That uh, long Allen key with the ball end on it is the perfect weapon for that. Throw an extension on it and you can work up here instead of trying to reach way down in the belly of the beast. Um, have you spotted our next bolt to tighten up? So, Right there, that's a engine mount bolt. And that's rattled its way completely out of the hole. Uh, it was dancing around when I was doing my pre-trip this morning. So uh, we'll check the other ones while we're at it. There's four of them. There are uh, rubber isolation bushings underneath of it. That's just like a really big steel washer. So kind of important to keep those tightened up. And if you let them rattle too long, it'll beat the threads off the end of the bolt and you'll hate life. Okay, hey, we've uh, double checked that nut or that bolt on the end of that pinion down there and it's tight, hadn't moved. So a uh, bit of the slop is gone. Not all of it though. I'm gonna compare there. Which is better. It's probably the, the key stock that holds that, uh, that drive gear on to the end of that uh, hydraulic motor that's loose so uh, you'll get play in it over time just uh, try to remember it um, it might even be worth it pick a arbitrary number like 50 or 100 or 250 hours but uh, maybe change the key stock that's in that little drive motor because they'll pound out it'll shear off eventually and this thing will just go round and round you won't be able to do anything with it so okay on to the oil change just going to convert an old jug here into a drain pan and we'll climb under there. So drain plug for this thing is, uh, let's see here, right there. It'd be a bit of a mess when I open it up, but ah. see if I can't get oil all over my phone. here don't throw your empty jugs away from your washer fluid they are handy
keep your plugs somewhere handy. Easy to find. I love these gloves. These are high flex. A uh, little more detail there. They're rubberized. They don't take on oil unless you get it on the back side, which is kind of hard to do because there's very little cloth back there. So, uh, Why is it nice using a four liter washer fluid jug for changing oil on small engines? Uh, Cause you know, four liters fits in there. So if it fills up a quarter of the way, it takes one liter. If it fills up halfway, it takes two liters. If it fills up all the way and you gotta run and get a bigger one, well, you know, it takes more than four liters. So it just really helps you judge how much oil to put back in some of these small engines. This is a 13 horse Briggs and Stratton in here. And I've never done a oil change on a Briggs like this. So I can't imagine it'd be that much different from like a Honda GX 13 or something. So I'll let that drain out for a little bit and I'll fill her up with some good oil. Plugs back in, good and tight. Uh, Got to throw some oil in it now. If you're wondering where the check fill plug is, it's right there, that little yellow guy. Now, here's the bad part. It is buried in there, so it's a bit of a bit of a rascal to get out. And yes, there are two of them, so you can use that one there or that one over there whichever one you think is more convenient. So, uh, I bought a nice long funnel. That guy right there. But, I'm mean, gonna guess it's about the same quality manufacturing as this machine is. So, I'm guessing it's going to leak. It's uh, kind of just a slip fit. Anyways, uh, this is what we got out for oil. And if you look there, that's not a lot of oil. So I'm gonna ballpark that as just under a liter going back into it. Um, because this is a Briggs & Stratton high performance machine, we are going to use nothing but the best oil. Yeah, I'm shitting you. Um, it really doesn't matter. Um, it does, but it doesn't. Just change your oil, change it often. I mean, for one liter of oil, if you change your oil every 20 machine hours, big deal. Like this stuff, you know, what are you, 10 bucks, 15 bucks? That's cheap insurance. It's better than buying the AMSOIL stuff and tossing it in there just to flush it out every 40 or 50 hours. So as long as oil gets changed, that's the big thing. There's no oil filter on this machine. You can see, it just it, there's none there. So you're never gonna filter out the contamination from the metal parts wearing together in the engine. All that stuff just sits in the oil and pollutes it. So change your oil, change it often. Don't worry so much about what you're putting back in as long as it's fresh and, you know, maybe don't buy the cheapest, but it doesn't have to be awesome stuff. Okay, we'll uh, get the funnel in there and I'll show you what's going on. So, 700 mils of Harvest King PV Mart's finest going back into this Briggs. Uh, this funnel is actually working really well. Can't really see all the way down there, but yeah, works good. Uh, we'll just, uh, come on. Focus. I'll uh, give it a second to drip out of the funnel. Just double check the level. And next step will be a quick grease job. All right, we're all greased up and good to go. If you don't know how to use a grease gun, well, hand in your man card. You probably don't want to own something like this. So uh, grease points, we got these four down here. Two, three, four. Uh, this is a needle style grease tip. I use the one that came with it. Uh, you have a, a little toolbox that uh, comes with a cheap grease gun. Replace that right away. Anyways, uh, both ends of the cylinder have a needle fitting. You can trade them out to a standard grease nipple if you want. Here, down there, here, right down there. Uh, that cylinder, both ends, 
And on the arms here where they pivot, there's a standard grease fitting. And then you have two remote lines for greasing the turntable underneath of the machine. Uh, good idea, actually, when you service it and you pull the floor pan out, just double check that those lines aren't broken. Uh, they like to break and you have a big pile of grease in your floorboards and a very dry swing bearing and that gets expensive really quick. Um, all the pivot points here and here and you know those ones, they all need a shot of grease. Um, keep greasing until you see grease come out. It should come out on both sides but depending on how tight they made this bolt it might squish it a bit and it just finds its easiest path out. Uh, same thing with down here. You can bonk down here with a dead blow hammer and move that uh, cylinder around. There's a little bit of slop in these pins, so it'll move around. Helps you get grease out both sides of it. Um, yeah, pretty much just give everything a good look over. We clean the windows in the cab, make sure they're all nice and clear again. Except for that stick of tape they put on everything when they ship it. Get rid of that later. Uh, yeah, we'll uh, go give her a little test drive, make sure she's nice and smooth, and we'll uh, see you in the next video.